Here off the coast of Panama, where we just recovered what we believe to be the coffin of legendary explorer Sir Francis Drake, who was buried at sea over 400 years ago. Are you sure you want to be defiling your ancestors' remains like that? You make it sound so dirty. <laughs> Besides, thought you didn't believe me. Well, I did do my research, and apparently Francis Drake didn't have any children. Well, history can be wrong, you know. <clears throat> For example, you can't defile an empty coffin. What the hell? <laughs> you devil. What is it? Come on, hold it up. Oh, no, 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 no way. Deal was for a coffin. That's it. Wait a minute. If my show hadn't have funded this expedition, hey, hey, you wouldn't have... You got your story, lady. Look, Mr. Drake, you signed a contract. <laughs> I have a right to see no, every single thing that... Could you hold that thought? Sully, uh, we got some trouble. Hurry it up. Okay, okay. What's going on? Uh... Pirates. Pirates? Yeah, the modern kind. They don't take prisoners. At least not male prisoners. Wait, what are you talking about? Uh, sh shouldn't we call the authorities or something? Yeah, that'd be a great idea, but we don't exactly have a permit to be here. What? Yeah, so unless you want to end up in a Panamanian jail, we should probably handle this ourselves. What, well, what's worse? You obviously haven't been in a Panamanian jail. Do you know how to use one of these? Uh, yeah, it's like a camera. You just you point and shoot, right? Good girl. Here we go. Welcome everybody, Josh here, back at a day with a brand new YouTube video. So today we're talking about this, which is Uncharted Drake's Fortune. Now, Uncharted Drake's Fortune is basically the video game that started all. As you guys know, before I wasn't really a huge Jack and Dexter fan, which I think that Naughty Dog actually produced before made series. He also produced games like Crash Bandicoot, which is eventually in Uncharted 4 of these. And, and so I'm a massive fan of Uncharted. This is basically one of my all-time favorite video games of all time. And so I was kind of um, a little bit worried about trying to review this game just because I didn't feel like I knew how to do this game justice, especially with so many other people reviewing this franchise already on their video channels. And so Uncharted means a lot to me. It's one of those things along with Indiana Jones that basically started my whole entire career. It's basically something that inspired me to kind of create stories, right? You know, screenplays of my own, which I am a screenwriter. And I think that the story for Nathan Drake as well as Uncharted franchise is one of those things that I can't really talk in terms of video games. And it's something like Halo where as time has gone on, I'm going to really, really love these games even further. And so I think that, you know, with that being the case and with the fact that I have Uncharted on sort of the PlayStation 3, I've had all the games in the franchise even in the PlayStation 4 era with the Nathan Drake collection. I even cosplay as Nathan Drake since you see here I have the original Uncharted Drake's Fortune shoulder holster rig which I actually got the shoulder holster rig from Etsy a while ago. I actually got two of them. I got one for Drake's Fortune. I got the one from Uncharted 4 Thieves and that one of the cosplay companies that I actually bought from actually makes sort of the shoulder holster rigs for. And it's got screen at NDI uh, logo on the back of it but this isn't going to be a review for the Uncharted shoulder holster rig that I actually got a while ago. This is going to be for Uncharted Drake's Fortune. Now Uncharted Drake's Fortune is basically the game, like I said before, that started all in terms of the franchise. You see Uncharted begin with Nathan Drake and Victor Sullivan. They're basically looking for the Lost City of Gold or El Dorado. They quickly realize that after Nathan Drake discovers the confidence of Francis Drake, that there's something much more to Island that they're eventually going to be going on. And so finding the confidence of Francis Drake is basically the inciting incident, as you would in a story, that basically starts the search for El Dorado. And Nathan Drake's seaplane, piloted by Victor Sullivan, who was actually the pilot of that aircraft, crash lands on the Lost City of El Dorado. And they eventually learn that Sir Francis Drake and his crew basically crash landed there as well with their own ships. They basically were stranded there for a very long time. And then once Nathan Drake finds the dead bodies of the crew members of Sir Francis Drake, as well as the Nazi soldiers that were basically there, he basically realizes that there is something much more there than meets the eye. And so one of the things I really like about the Uncharted franchise is the third person action adventure Tomb Raider style look that they're kind of going for with these games. When Amy Hennig actually created Uncharted, she was basically trying to copy stuff that she'd see books such as the Indiana Jones franchise 
Tomb Raider Die Hard. I basically, when I was a kid, would describe Uncharted as being a Indiana Jones meets Die Hard meets Tomb Raider style video game to anybody that hasn't played that wants to give games. And that's precisely what it is. I think that the Uncharted franchise has become a really mainstay in the action adventure set piece style, you know, thing that has toppled even most movies in terms of set pieces, the action adventure nature of it, and the fact they have really great stories attached to it with Nathan Drake and Victor Sullivan's kind of storyline throughout the games, where Victor Sullivan is basically like Nathan Drake's mentor, kind of teaching him the ropes as time goes on, of how to kind of be a treasure hunter along sort of being a father figure to Nathan. And then you got the love and truth aspect of games as well, where you, know, you see Elena Fisher at the beginning of the game. She is basically just this typical Valley Girl character within the Uncharted franchise. She basically gets involved with Nathan Drake when she gets a lead in terms of her career with the fact there's this treasure hunter looking for the lost city of El Dorado. She's a reporter and she kind of, you know, documents lost ancient history. And then she's basically swept along this adventure with Nathan Drake and Victor Sullivan. And the three of them together have a, you know, really comedic vibe to them. It's a really funny video game. And if you've ever played video game franchises, well, you kind of know that they have really great one liners. They have really great awesome action set pieces like I stated before. There's a lot of really great cast in terms of supporting characters like Eddie Raja, who's based on his basic sidekick throughout the entirety of the game. You think he's basically the leader at the beginning of the game, and then it's basically revealed towards the end that Victor Varro is actually the one that's in charge of everything, the whole entire operation. And then there's the ending of the game where you kind of figure out that Lost City of Gold, and actually a city of gold, is basically a pillar that kind of brings people back to life and kind of reanimates them kind of like zombies. And that's one of the elements of the game that I actually really didn't like in the first game, this supernatural element. I know it's kind of copying off of Tomb Raider, but also basically had sort of that supernatural element to it. But everything up until that point, I think was really well done. I think that the game was really solid in terms of the action adventure and the set pieces and harkening back to that old Tomb Raider vibes that we were getting this game and then doing something new completely different at the same time. And then you kind of got to that supernatural element to it and it was like it kind of just mirrored off to its own universe within the Uncharted world that they're trying to kind of build within this whole realistic setting and universe. And that's one of the things that really drove me to really not like this game at first. But then once I finished the ending of the game, then you kind of see sort of the direction of Nathan Drake as a character where he only cares about his fan legacy, where he's trying to kind of reconcile with the fact that he is an ancestor to Sir Francis Drake, as you later find out throughout the video game franchise that he's not really related to Sir Francis Drake, but it's basically something that his parents kind of thought was something that related to Nathan Drake. And so for me, I think that Uncharted is one of those video game franchises that really excelled in making it feel like you're playing a live action movie while you're actually playing a video game. I think that's one of the video game franchises that really started the ball rolling with this, along with things like God of War or God of War 2 back during the whole PS3 days. This game, in terms of the gameplay mechanics, really does feel like Gears of War in terms of mixing the cover based style with the fact you can hit a button and then basically snap to cover and take cover and take hot shots, enemies, and stuff like that. The enemy AI is actually really intelligent, especially within Drake's fortune. It kind of reacts to the gunfire that you are firing at them when they are trying to shoot back at you or they're trying to dodge and duck out of you know, cover and stuff like that. It really does feel like you're in a budget blockbuster movie, which is kind of what Amy Hennig's going when she actually created this franchise. And so I really respected that as a filmmaker. I respect that as a gamer when video game company goes out of way to kind of do justice to the film world while also maintaining that of the video game world as well and kind of realizing that there's stuff in video games that you can do in gaming that you can't really do in terms of a movie, which is why I think that while I like the Uncharted film, it doesn't really translate as well to the movie format because there's a lot of gunfire, there's a lot of set pieces that like slow and stuff that you can interact with in the game because it's a very interactive experience compared to the movie version where you're basically just watching stuff happen as it goes along. As a fan of things like Indiana Jones, Tomb Raider, Die Hard, this really feels like we're thrust into that whole universe, and I think that's one of the things that really they excel at in this game. I really like the characters of Nathan Drake, Victor Sullivan, and even Elena Fisher, which she started out kind of annoying throughout the games, kind of like your typical average valley girl that's trying to get into the action and stuff like that and trying to follow sort of Nathan Drake along through the story, but after a while you kind of wrote to like all these characters and every single character in this universe actually matters, you know, has a place to be in, in terms of franchise, and I don't think that is a loss in terms of the other games of the franchise, but Drake's fortune really does hold a special place in my heart because I got a PS3 at sort of the beginning of sort of the PlayStation's life cycle with PS3. I got Resistance Fall Man, but it wasn't until Uncharted that, you know, I was really blown away with terms of the graphics, the set design, set pieces, you know, the music in the game is really harking back to things like Tomb Raider and Indiana Jones, which I really do like as well. I actually cosplayed both Nathan Drake and Indiana Jones, so it was kind of cool to see things that I recognize from other movies and video game franchises mix it to one. I think that's one of the reasons why, even to this day, Uncharted Drake's Fortune is basically one of my favorite video games of all time, along things like Halo, Gears of War, Mass Effect, some of those games that I actually played when I was a kid that really shaped sort of who I am as an adult and the stories I like to tell growing up as an adult as well. So, with my final conclusions, I think that if you're thinking about picking up either the Nathan Drake collection or if you're thinking about buying Uncharted Drake's Fortune for it. I think that it's a really great solid action adventure game and you know for me personally I didn't really play a lot of third person action adventure games before this in Gears of War and actually playing Uncharted and playing things like Tomb Raider in the past and a whole bunch of other video game franchises really kind of got me back in third person action adventure games even in 2008. You know, I think that's when sort of video games start to get really really good in terms of graphics and the storytelling the cinematic approach to storytelling that Naughty Dog is actually known for and I really do like Naughty Dog's game.
games. I don't really like some of their newer games, and I'll actually go over that when I eventually review The Last of Us, The Last of Us Part 2. But I think that where it's time, even in 2008 or 2007, when Uncharted Drake's Fortune was coming into its infancy, this is a really unique experience that you really didn't get anywhere on any other console, and it's really a system seller for the system, and it was like coming at the tail end of sort of that generation. So I think that that really kind of spurred my interest to what the PlayStation had in store, especially with that Uncharted 2 Among Thieves is coming out, and that game itself as well is a really great and solid game. I might actually have to say that Uncharted Drake's Fortune and Uncharted 2 are my top two favorite games in the franchise, but I'll have to talk about that for a separate video at a different time. But I think that if you're thinking about buying the Nathan Drake collection, if you're thinking about buying Drake's Fortune, which is part of that collection, you're not going to be let down in terms of playing it. It's a really solid package, and I think it's still worth 70 60 bucks even to this very day. So that is my review of Uncharted Drake's Fortune. I really didn't cover as much as I probably wanted to in terms of the lore and backstory of Nathan Drake, just because of the fact that there's so many videos out there kind of talking about that stuff right now. Maybe in the future I might go a little bit more in depth because I'm a huge fan of, you know, sort of the whole lore between Sir Francis Drake and Nathan Drake, sort of the whole connection between those characters. I even have sort of the, let's see here, the Uncharted Sir Francis Drake ring, which I bought a while ago that I'm kind of wearing in this video. So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think of Uncharted Drake's fortune. Are you a huge fan of that franchise? Do you kind of have sort of cosplay gear for Nathan Drake as well? Do you cosplay as the character as well? Because it's a really easy cause. Are you a huge fan of the video game franchise? What are your some of your um, overall favorite video game branches out there. Uncharted really does go out there with Halo and Killzone and sort of Resistance and some of those other games that I played during the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 era that really did kind of shape sort of my own, you know, imagination of what, you know, film and video games kind of accomplish in terms of a cinematic approach to gaming. But let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. So, those guys, so. Sorry you didn't get your story. No, uh, that's all right. Know the other stories. You still owe me one. <laughs> I'm good for it. 